All right, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. This should be an interesting day. I mean, I was watching the demo. It's pretty mind-boggling. This is the kind of stuff that five years ago you would have said, no, 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 this is Star Trek, right? <laughs> kind of looks like this. So who has ever seen a live futurist before? Anybody <laughs> has? Uh, yeah? Okay. M most people don't really know what a futurist is, so I will start with this. What does a futurist do? Uh, and a lot of people are actually experiencing when I speak, you know, I've done about 1,600 talks in the last 12 years, and I see this a lot, kind of a future shock. You may know the book by Alvin Toffler, or this, right? Fascinating. And you know that uh, Spock, uh, Leonard Nimoy, died a few weeks ago. So I well, fascinating is a word I use for the unexpected. Fascinating. 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 Well, you get the point. <laughs> a, lot <of> my <laughs> a lot of my work is fascinating, but it's also quite scary sometimes when you're looking at the future and saying, wow, all these things are happening that look like Blade Runner, like Minority Report. But keep one thing in mind when we talk about artificial intelligence and big data, right? This is not Hollywood. Hollywood makes movies so that we're entertained that, you know, artificial intelligence will not take over our lives in 10 years, right? There are some dangers, and we'll talk about that, but basically what we have now is pretty uh, amazing, fascinating, and sometimes scary exponential change. And this is interesting, you know, when I started on the internet in 1995 doing something like Spotify, we were right in the beginning of this curve, and it didn't matter if you would double from 0 0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 to, you know, on from there. But today we're actually here, we're at the takeoff point of an exponential wave of technology. And that has lots of challenges and lots of really amazing things that we see happening here. At this takeoff point, we're going to see stuff that is, uh, for example, the idea of how long computers will have to advance to fill, have the same capacity than the human brain. This is a great graph. You know, for illustration purposes, same thing as here. Not much happened in the beginning, but then we have this, right? Very quick growth in just 10, 15 years. All of a sudden, what Ray Kurzweil calls a singularity, which is an interesting thought that the machines could be as intelligent, as, at least with numbers, right? not emotionally, hopefully, <laughs> than, than humans. But uh, definitely a change that we're going to see in the very near future. Everything that can be digitized and automated will be. Music, films, television, books, money. Yesterday, Facebook money, right? today was announced. Everything that can be digitized or automated will be mind-boggling change, and basically what's happening, technology and humanity are overlapping. Now, I see this primarily as a positive thing. I mean, it's an interesting angle when you're looking at this, you know, it, it could be all kinds of dystopian stuff that we see out of this, including uh, the, the possible reign of robots, right? But basically, we have to think about technology also in an ethical way. This is probably, I would add that to the tagline, the new way to work a new way to think about values. That will be also be important. But when we look at this curve one more time, we go back to what this company, what were they called? I think something with an N, Nokia, uh, used to say, connecting people. Right? Now, it used to be about connecting things, the Internet of Things, but tomorrow is about connecting intelligence. That's a whole different cup of tea. So we're talking about stuff like this, you know, we've seen this around for years, cloud computing and data. You've seen, of course, the possibility of tracking and looking at people and reading what they do. You look at basically looking inside of people with nanotechnology and nanobots and all the stuff that was in out genetic engineering and, of course, the future of robotics and artificial intelligence. And all of that is going to be about connecting intelligence. This rather convoluted slide is from a friend of mine, Frank Diana. It shows one thing really important, and we'll make this available for downloading later is that these trends are combinatorial, not just exponential. So if you're looking at all these things together, connected healthcare, sharing economy, autonomous vehicles, it's all happening at the same time. It's not happening one after the other. So if you think about this combinatorial, exponential, interdependent, it's a pretty mind-boggling future the next 10 years. will hold for us and probably, of course, after that as well. Very important to recognize about computing. We used to use computers for system of records, keeping stuff, keeping information. Then a few years ago, social media, so-called, right, about systems of engagement, that's what we see here, right? And then about systems of intelligence, 
And that's a really different way of looking at you know, an order of magnitude larger of what we're doing here. It's a lot larger to think about intelligence and engagement than to think about records. So if you have data and that's just records, it's kind of useless, right? It's dumb data, garbage in, garbage out, right? Can't do much with it. But intelligence, that's a whole different cup of tea. Hemingway has a great saying, how does a man go broke gradually, then suddenly? And I can't tell you how many of my clients have experienced this. Because five years ago, we're looking at this and we're saying, yes, it's totally obvious what's going to happen. Right? Facebook and all the social media companies and WhatsApp, and they will do money. Right? If you're a bank, it's obvious. Today it happened and the banks are crying, oh my God, you know, what are we going to do? One billion people can send money to each other for free. Right? We're talking about, I mean, this is a huge place of disruption that's right here between the linear and the exponential. So, digital transformation of pretty much every industry. Again, started with music, film, television, books. You know, most people are now that are getting a little bit, uh, not exactly to be 25 or 30, but older, are looking to read on the Kindle, right? Because you can zoom and you have a light, right? Digital transformation in books. Three times as many Kindle books sold as printed books in a very short time. And we're talking about this, right? A reset of the mind. How we work, how we interact, how we communicate, and of course, what kind of values do we have? I mean, it's clearly going to be a very important discussion here. And we're no longer thinking about industries. It's a very interesting example. It's a great book called The End of Competitive Advantage. It's not my book, but it's still a good book. It's basically like this, right? The industries are converging to be an arena. I mean, if you're looking at IBM, it's a great example. Right? IBM is now playing an arena of things. It's no longer about boxes, hardware, or software. It's a whole arena of things. And that happens to all of us now. Every day we're thinking about what else. You know, take the example of Tesla, my favorite example. Tesla is not in the car business. What business is Tesla in? Mobility, transportation, data. I mean, they're connecting data. Right? They're finding data on what people do, and they're going to sell that data. And they're going to get into businesses that have nothing to do with four wheels. That's arena thinking. We have to think about arenas. Great example here about arenas. Think about the self-driving car, right? When we look at the self-driving car, you know if you, if you actually drive. It's not, this is not going to happen in the way that we think in, in 20 years. You know, Driving a car is extremely complicated for humans. But driving a car on a separate lane in the city, we're going to see very quickly. Here's a short uh, little video clip from a Dutch insurance company. It shows what happens when you don't have the right context and timing. Introducing the all-new self-driving car. It does the driving for you, so you can catch up on the more important things in life. It automatically takes the right turns. It effortlessly avoids unexpected obstacles. Well, you get the point. You can see the rest on YouTube. But, it, you know, if the context isn't right for what we're doing, it, it, it's a misfit. Right? It has to fit in with the other stuff, with society, with other things. Great example is television. Right? The transformation that happened in television, it's no longer this. I mean, if your 20-year-old kid moves out, he's not going to have this. He's going to have this, right? The cloud. Television is in the cloud now. It's any screen any, anywhere in the world. If you're a movie studio, this is not going to look very good for you because in the past, you sold a DVD for 25 euros. Now you're selling Hulu or Netflix for $10 a month for 100,000 movies. That's called disruption. So I have a question for you, for your businesses. Is some of what you do digitally contestable? Can somebody come up and take a piece of what you do by inventing something around it? That's a key question. Airbnb disrupts hotels, came in through the back door. Facebook today, the banks. And those competitors are not from your sector, but from your arena. It's very important to remember. Gary Hamill said the biggest reason that companies fail is they overinvest in what is as opposed to what might be. This is a key point, especially here in Germany, right? Speed over perfection. Now, you would never say that in Germany, of course. Uh, and this whole idea of saying, okay, we have to think about what might be, we have to use imagination. I mean, why is 95% of, 
of internet uh, entrepreneurship and, and new innovation coming from Silicon Valley, right? Because they have imagination more than pretty much anything else, really. But we have to think about what might be. Right? I mean, of course, they can execute as well, but imagination is not really a sort of a cultural trait of where I live in Switzerland, right? It's more like aversion. But we have to think about what happens here now is that artificial intelligence is part of all of these things. And it's mind-boggling, the stuff that we see here. Now, look at this is the software that the Facebook founder, Mark Zuckerberg, invested in called Vicarious. And he says, we're building software that thinks and learns like a human. Think about that for a second. I mean, that's a sort of overlap of human-machine and the interfaces we're seeing every day now, speaking to your computer, gesturing. You're not going to type in the words that we just typed in here earlier. You just speak. And it will be interactively presented. You'll have wearables that will do that for you. There's good things and bad things about that. You know, I, I would never have an Apple Watch myself because I'm already distracted enough, as you can tell. But computers are no longer that other thing outside of us. This is a very big shift in society. We have to think about what that means, for example, for sensor networks, the Internet of Things. Technology becomes invisible and kind of moves inside of us. And look at this, you know, this is actually very fitting to the topic here, right? Mainframe, desktop, computer, laptop, tablet, mobile, head. Huh? That could be heaven or hell. In America, they say, that this is a very good word for this, a term you know, hell called hell then, right? It's hell and heaven both, depending on how you look at it. But, you know, predictive analytics clearly will become a default. Predictive, not, not in the sense of predicting, like, you know, five years from now, but getting a good sentiment and using solid data to do that. I mean, clearly, we're going to see a lot of this. Uh, not this, but <laughs> this is an interesting slide that points in the right direction, right? Because while we have prediction models, and we can do that, we, we will not have omniscience. I mean, Ignorance is dangerous, but omniscience, looking for omniscience, is even more dangerous. It's very important to remember that we have to have those insights, but omniscience is not what we're talking about here. There is another part to that equation. So, if we go on this direction, we're clearly seeing this mind-boggling warp speed takeoff, going back to Spock, right? He's inside of this. And many people talk about this being sort of a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, you know, it's a military term, so you can expect death to follow. Uh, but we have now another kind of VUCA that we're seeing all around us, velocity, unorthodoxy. Right? Richard Branson is like the embodiment of unorthodoxy. Right? Collaboration. Right? I mean, actually, what's called hyper-collaboration, and good old American word, awesomeness. Well, we say, wow, this is really mind-blowing. This is awesome. Right? Once you, for example, once you start watching Netflix over the top, and you cannot just do it in Switzerland, but, you know, using an eye, a, a tunnel, right? <laughs> then you can watch the whole thing and say, well, this is, oh, this is awesome. Right? This is what I've always wanted. Or Spotify. Look what's happening here in terms of awesome. How many companies have reached a billion-dollar valuation? The time has been crunched completely. So I'll give you a short summary, and then I'm, I'm looking for your questions via Twitter and then personally, if you're so inclined. Point number one, the future is exponential and combinatorial. And it's gradually, then suddenly. So if you're wondering how quick this will take, it is usually very gradual and then all at once. It's very important to remember when you look at your clients. Invest more in what might be. You should spend 5% of your time thinking of what might be. Then you're really going to be ready for the future. Deploy systems of engagement and intelligence. And I don't just mean software internally, I mean in terms of thinking. Right? This is not about records, about data. This is about engagement and intelligence. And the new VUCA is the flip. Velocity, unorthodoxy, collaboration. And I have finished with that awesomeness. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.